I want to talk about the sexuality amongst the group, uh, Cecilia's group. Now, when I first met Cecilia, she had a husband and two kids. So obviously I thought she was completely straight. And um, as the months in our friendship progressed, I saw her flirting with other men, um, obviously while her husband was not around. And this obviously solidified the whole supposed fact that she was straight. Uh, except for, you know, she's cheating on her husband here, yeah, which I wasn't impressed with, and I would, you know, bring it up with her. But as the months then further progressed, Cecilia started telling me that people think that she and I are in a gay relationship. I was very, very confused, and I asked her why. And she said it's because we are very close, uh, and when we say goodbye to each other, we hug each other goodbye. Uh, to which I responded, you know, saying that we're just best friends, uh, we don't do anything else, and when she says goodbye to anybody in a group, she hugs all of them goodbye. So why am I isolated and pinpointed to being the one that's in a gay relationship with her? And she just laughed it off and she said to me that, you know, people like to think what they want to think. So just ignore it. Now I thought at that point it was just going to be a once-off statement um, that some person had, had made, you know, this comment. Cecilia never told me who it was, and I had never heard this statement from anybody else. So for all I know, no one could have actually been thinking that she and I were in a gay relationship. But this topic came up more and more. Uh, after the first one, and um, it sounded like from the, you know, how Cecilia had been portraying this whole thing to me, is that people were busy talking about us, and they were very convinced that she and I were gay, and Cecilia would bring this up with me quite often, uh, to the point, in the, okay, in the beginning, I would laugh it off as just being ridiculous, because I know people like to think whatever they want, and they can assume whatever they want, and but when it becomes very frequent, and I also don't know who's saying it, I started to get, well, other than confused, I was getting worried, and I started questioning how to undo this so people can stop thinking and saying these things. But there was actually nothing I could undo because we never did anything. Uh, we, I mean, I would not even allow Cecilia to eventually hug me goodbye because I became that paranoid. But that didn't change anything. Um, there was nothing else to change. We did not do anything. There was no reason for us to be called or labeled in a gay relationship. And as the, the months and the years progressed, this still carried on. I would hear it about once a week, if not twice a week at times. And uh, eventually it stopped being statements from Cecilia saying that other people were saying it, but just general gay topics and gay statements. Uh, to the point where I still recall Cecilia very directly asking me, you know, if she was gay and if I was gay, you know, maybe we should be together in a gay relationship. And when she said this to me, she was busy laughing. Now, Cecilia liked to joke about a lot of things. So when she was laughing about making the statement, I immediately thought, you know, she was just joking about it. And I laughed it off as well. But at the same time, I was very wary about it. I didn't, at that point, I definitely wasn't wary that she was wanting to be in a gay relationship, but she was just more mocking the other people and what they were saying. Uh, I definitely, definitely did not think that Cecilia was trying to see if I wanted to be in a relationship with her. And um, this carried on up until, I mean, okay, let me just add this. Uh, I did not want to make, uh, let people or even Cecilia think that we were in a gay relationship or that I wanted to be in one. So my alarm bells and my wariness about this whole topic with Cecilia was um, going off like crazy. But now this carried on up until 
I left Cecilia and um, by the time I had left her I still completely thought that Cecilia was completely uh, straight but by the time the investigation started uh, when I I started meeting with the captains and um, the head prosecutor and advocates I started finding out more and more information that I'm not sure I really wanted to hear in the beginning I first heard that Miranda and Cecilia were in a relationship together I was stunned, shocked to me um, Miranda I also thought was completely straight because she also only spoke about men and she had two kids and she also only spoke about men so this news was very surprising for me but then after I thought about it for a while I guess it kind of made sense and then as the investigation continued I found out that Cecilia I found out that Cecilia and uh, Miranda and John Barnard were having threesomes from what also sounded like it was a fairly frequent thing to do now this really disgusted me um, I, I honestly don't even know how to relay as to how that made me think um, or what that made me think and not even now um, just disgusted yeah, I, that's all the only word I think I can use right now, just utterly disgusted. And then I was told after that that C Cecilia had convinced Zach Valentine that she and him were soulmates. Now, by this point, after hearing so much about all these intertwined, intimate relationships, I don't think anything could surprise me at this point, and especially with the way Cecilia works and manipulates people. So I wasn't too surprised about what was going on with Cecilia and Zach Valentine but now taking a step back and looking at the whole scenario Cecilia was married to a man with two kids in a relationship with Miranda Stain having threesomes with John Barnard but soulmates with Zach Valentine this is one very sick and twisted uh, scenario that's going on there I still uh, when I was first told this uh, and uh, even now, I still can't wrap my mind around it. It's just sick and twisted and distorted and so many things alike. But um, shortly after, I mean, I was literally bombed with information by the advocate on this topic soon after. But when I questioned, you know, what Cecilia's husband has to say about all of this, because they were still together, I found out that he was also gay. And he was, he had been in a relationship with his best friend, who I had known the entire time I was best friends with Cecilia. Um, at that point, I thought I couldn't be shocked by anything more, but I was wrong. I was horrifically shocked. I had known both these men. I had, uh, for all I know, they could have been in a relationship as well while I was best friends with Cecilia. This sounds like something worse than the plot to Days of Our Lives. I do not and cannot and probably never will understand this whole concept and this, this whole scenario. But as the investigations continued, uh, while Cecilia was on trial uh, in the final months, the investigators finally managed to get Rhea on the stand and Cecilia's advocates were desperately trying to justify why Rhea was testifying against Cecilia, but they couldn't really come up with anything because Rhea's information you could not sway you could not sway from, you could not disprove. So before um, Rhea got on the stand, we had already found out, I don't know if it was via Cecilia's advocate or who it was from, but the advocates on uh, Rhea's, uh, well, on the state side, I guess you could say, said that uh, that Cecilia's advocate is going to spin a nonsense story about Cecilia and Rhea having been in a relationship, and 
the only reason why Rhea is on the stand testifying against Cecilia is because it's a lover's spat. Uh, some jumbled up nonsense that Rhea and Cecilia had been intimately involved in a gay relationship, but they had some terrible falling out, and now Rhea wants to testify against Cecilia to make her look bad. Now, I know they, this, this has been spread in the media that you know either Rhea and Cecilia were in a relationship or it's just a rumor and there's question marks around it. I hope by me saying this will put the rumors and the stories to rest because I feel I need to say this on Rhea's behalf. There was no intimate relationship between Cecilia and Rhea whatsoever. I know I wasn't there for the remaining two years that Rhea was with Cecilia, but I knew Rhea as a person. Rhea was not uh, that type of person, that's not the way her sexuality went. It is, I can 100% definitely, undoubtedly say that Rhea and Cecilia were definitely, definitely not in an intimate relationship. And even when, uh, having seen Rhea, uh, at the courts before she was on the stand the look on her face and the look in her eyes about the whole scenario you could see it was genuine disgust Rhea was not that type of person um, Rhea was completely straight just everything altogether about the whole scenario was completely untrue and it all boiled down to genuinely being a nonsense story spun hoping that the head prosecutor will believe that Rhea was only testifying because she was unhappy or angry or whatever emotion with Cecilia because they had a bad falling out because they had been in an intimate relationship but I'm so glad to say that the head prosecutor was a very wise and knowledgeable judge um, in all aspects of the case uh, he dumbfounded me but this rumor and the story is completely untrue and when I heard when I first heard this whole story before it even came out publicly that the story was gonna be spun um, like I said I don't know who told uh, the captain and the advocates about it but it was even from it was even uh, stated from Cecilia's side. Um, I'm assuming it was from her advocates, although I cannot be 100% sure. But it was stated that this is a nonsense story that is going to be spun. So be prepared. Um, so I hope by me clarifying for Rhea's sake, that this puts the rumors and the, the lies to rest because I think it's completely unfair for people to think she was in a relationship uh, with someone like this. Um, never mind the fact that Rhea also is completely straight. So I hope by me speaking on Rhea's behalf that does help. <laughs>